Hello, um, everyone. So welcome to uh, this lecture on, uh, on ranks. Yes, uh, this is a continuation of the one we had uh, previously on sub rings. Uh, we ended the last lecture by looking at um, division rings, right? We looked at what division rings are. So let me, um, so we define what a division ring is, what a unit is, right? A unit is basically an, an, a non-zero element with a modificative inverse, right? That's a unit. I would say a division ring is a ring um, with unity that is non-zero and every element in that ring has a multiplicative inverse or every element there is a unit, okay? And uh, that is a division, that is a, a division ring. Of course, examples, um, a typical example of that will be um, the set of rational numbers, right? Uh, we know that they form Q, for instance, Q with uh, addition and multiplication is a ring, but it's also um, it's also a division ring because if you take any element apart from um, zero, right? If you take every element, every element there will have a multiplicative inverse, right? Every element will have a multiplicative inverse. Um, the the unity there is one, right? So Q here will be a division ring, right? If you're looking for an example of a division ring. Uh, that'll be it. Okay, of course, you can find several others. Uh, good, so now we move to fields. What is a field? Well, if you know what a division ring is, then it's easy to know what um, to define, um, know what a field is. A field is basically a division ring that is commutative. Remember when we say commutative, we are referring to commutativity with regards to uh, uh, multiplication, right? So, um, a commutative division ring is uh, is called a field, or if you like, a field is a ring. Um, is a division ring that is commutative. Okay. So first, you have to know what a division ring is, and then that ring must be commutative with regards to multiplication, and then it's called a field. Okay. Uh, now another way of saying that um, R there is a field is to say that. R without zero here forms an abelian group under multiplication, right? Remember that a division rank is basically a division rank will be the set R without zero uh, and it forms a group under multiplication. Well, if it's a field, we want it to be commutative. So it has to be an abelian group under multiplication. Okay, good. So that is, that is a field. So understand what a division rank is, understand what a field is, okay? Um, those are those are uh, important. Okay, so here's typical examples of um, of a field. All right, um, Q, R, and C, the set of rational numbers, real numbers, set of complex numbers, they form a field. Of course, the set Z here is not a field. In fact, it's not even a division ring because um, if you take any non-zero element there, apart from negative one and one, if you take for instance two. Well, the multiplicative inverse of two will be one over two, but one over two is not an integer. So um, that cannot be a field, neither is, is it a, um, a division rank. Okay, so Z, Z, C, Z, Z is not um, a field uh, and it's not a division rank as well. Okay, it's not, it's called to a field. Z is not a division ring, okay? Of course, if it's not a division ring, then automatically we know that it's not, um, it's not a field. Of course, a field has to be a division ring. And then if it's commutative, then we call it a field, all right? Okay, so those are examples of, um, examples of fields, okay? Again, knowing that something is a field, you know, basically helps us to, to know the operations we can apply, right, to that, um, to that set. That is the importance of knowing these things. Uh, what of a subfield? Well, we've looked at a sub ring, a subgroups, and all of that. So you get the idea of what a subfield will be. If I have a set E here, um, under additional multiplication, if it's a field, if E is a field, and I have a subset F of E, well, F, there will be a subfield of E if elements of F, right? The subset here form a field under the same operations of addition and multiplication, 
okay? These are the operations which, of course, F will inherit from E. That is the operation that I mean. On the other hand, here's another term, right? If F here is a subfield of E, E is sometimes called an extension field, okay? Okay, the bigger set is called an extension field of, uh, of F. Okay, and sometimes you can write this. So if you say F here is uh, less than or equal to E, in fact, what you mean is that F is a subfield of E. Remember, we use the same symbol for uh, subgroups, okay? Um, so when you, depending on the context, okay? If I know that I'm dealing with field and I see this, then they basically it means that F here is a subfield of E, or E is an extension, an extension field of F, okay? So um, examples, an ex example of that would be this, right? We know Q, R, and C here are um, fields, but Q is a subset of R, so Q is a subfield of R. R and Q are both sub subsets of C, therefore, both Q and R are subfields of, of C. Okay. On the other hand, here, C here is an extension. It's an extension field of R. It's an extension field of Q as well. Okay. Or if you like, R here is also an extension field of Q. All right. So just a few times to add to your um, to um, the already existing terms that you have learned. Okay, so like we had a test for uh, what a subring is, there's also a test for what a subfield is, and this theorem gives you a test. So to test that, you know, a set is a subfield, you could use these conditions here. So the theorem says a subset F of a field E is a subfield of E if and only if, okay, it satisfies the following conditions. F here must contain at least two elements, okay, and if X X and Y are element of F, then X minus Y is also an element of F, all right? And if X and Y are elements of F, then X times Y is also an element of F. So basically subtraction must be closed and multiplication must be closed under F, okay? And so remember that these are the two conditions that we need actually for something to be a, uh, a subring. Remember the theorems that we looked at before, right? Let me... Uh, let me quickly go back here. We'll, when we're dealing with subfields, we came across um, this, right? This theorem, color 23 here, right? If R and R2, R1 and R2 and S, then the difference, subtract, if you subtract them, you should have an element in S. If you multiply them, you have an element in C. If this holds, then you call it a sub ring, okay? So those are the two conditions, uh, the two conditions you also need all right, here for subfields. So if you go back here, right? So you see that this I and I, 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 and I, I, I are the conditions for a subfield. So for something to be a subfield, of course, it has to be a subring, right? And so you need these two conditions. The other one is that we need a multiplicative inverse, right? So if you have a non-zero element X that is in the, in the subset F and the, um, the inverse, right? It's a multiplicative inverse of X and E, then um, the, um, the uh, multiplicative inverse S should be an element of F, okay? So if you have elements of F that, that have multiplicative inverses, uh, if you can show that F is a sub, um, sub ring and that F contains at least two elements, if all these conditions are satisfied, then you can conclude that a subset is a subfield, okay? Good. So uh, we haven't really proved this, but you can you can keep this in mind. You can use this to prove that something is a subfield. Okay, good. Um, we move on to uh, define what um, a zero device is or the, what devices of zero are. Okay. Um, if I have uh, two elements A and B, okay. If there are two elements of a ring R such that uh, the product gives me zero but neither A nor B is zero, right? I have two elements that are non-zero, but if I multiply them, I get zero. Those two elements are called zero devices or devices of zero, okay? So those are devices of zero. So um, this is a typical example, right? The, um, um, what is it, the uh, integers modulo N, 
in this case, modulo 12, right? Modulo 12 will give zero, the elements have zero to 11, okay? Now two times six, for instance, is 12, under modulo 12, that is zero, right? Four times three is also zero, eight times nine is zero, six times uh, 10 is zero, right? 12 goes into 60, remainder zero. So, so you see that you have, you can multiply two elements that give you zero, but neither of them is zero. So two, uh, six, four, three, eight, nine, ten. all these elements will be called zero devices or devices of zero. So that's what we have here. Okay. So those are devices of, um, devices of zero. Um, so, so keep that, keep that, um, keep also that in mind. Okay, so we'll need that in our next in our next um, lecture to talk about uh, integral domains. So basically, in this lecture, we have talked about what a field is. is basically um, a, um, a division ring that is commutative, right? Again, commutative means commutative with respect to multiplication. So a field is basically a commutative division ring. Okay. Uh, a subfield will be a subset of a field, and all the elements, of course, form a field. They have um, a subfield. Um, zero devices are elements that, when you multiply them, they are not, they are not zero. But when you multiply them, they get zero, and those are called devices of zero or zero, or zero devices. Okay, and of course, we have a theorem that you can use to test for a subfield. Okay, so in the next one, in the last one for this series on rings and fields, uh, I'll talk about integral domains and that will be, uh, that will be it for these ones. Okay.